got a hidden body camera and we're going undercover. This is my flood salvage Mercedes S-Class that I fixed up in part one of this series. I purchased this vehicle at an auction in New York, and rather than having a salvage title, it comes with the infamous MV907A salvage certificate as its ownership document. Now, I discovered after purchasing the vehicle that many states don't actually accept this document. In this video, I'm going to bring you guys along with me as I try to get this vehicle registered in the state of New Hampshire, including going through the process of the state police salvage inspection. I have a lot of viewers who are not in the U.S., and maybe you don't know what a salvage title is. In the U.S., a title is the ownership document of a vehicle. When an insurance company has a vehicle insurance claim with substantial damage, they'll classify it as a total loss. When this happens, they'll send the vehicle off to the auction with a salvage title for some clown like me to come along and buy it. Before I can drive the vehicle on the road, I have to fix it and get it registered. Before I can register it, I have to bring the vehicle to a salvage inspection where, one, I prove that the vehicle is fully repaired, and two, I show all my receipts for all the parts that I used to repair it. The rationale here, as I understand it, is to make it harder to use parts from stolen vehicles, therefore reducing the incentive for auto theft. On the DMV website, I found a list of documents I would need, including proof of ownership, the insurance adjuster's report, receipts for any parts used to fix the vehicle, and the DMV form to apply for the salvage inspection. At this point, I'm still waiting for the ownership documents to come in, so I figured I'd give the insurance company a call to see if I could get a copy of the insurance adjuster's report. It should be really interesting to see how they came up with this $26,000 figure for the repair cost of the vehicle. Insurance. This is Natasha. How can I help you? Good morning. I'm calling because I purchased a salvage title vehicle at an auction and I believe it was sold by your insurance company. So I was wondering if I could get a copy of the insurance adjuster's report. Um, yeah, I can try to look into that for you. Okay. I'm going to put you on hold for just a moment. I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure how that goes. We don't normally get those calls in our department. So let me double check with the supervisor and see what we can do to help out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I figured out who you need to speak with. His name is Daryl. Um, I did try to give him a call. It's going to his voicemail. So I'm going to uh, send you over to his voicemail. Just leave him a message and he should get back to you soon. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. All right, very good. Give me just a moment. Please leave a message after the tone. I'm calling about claim number 4001. Uh, this is actually a vehicle that I purchased a uh, salvage title at an auction. and. Eventually, I got a call back from the insurance adjuster who actually works for an independent company, and he sent me a copy of the appraisal report, and check this out. The report shows that the vehicle was in non-drivable condition, and it does indeed list the repair cost at over $26,000. Here are the appraiser's comments. I inspected the vehicle at the repair shop. I observed a water level rose above the interior seats, compromising the interior in the entire electrical system. Festering black mold is present, as photos show. This is absolutely crazy. You can see in a couple of the appraisal photos that the appraiser used an arrow in the photos, but it's pointing to nothing. There's no mold, no water line, the floor looks bone dry and clean, just the way it was when I got the car. The estimate shows a quote for replacing things like the alternator and starter, quite a few control modules, and a bunch of interior components. Remember in part one of the series, when I got the vehicle, it was running and driving, and there was no sign of any flood damage. There was a single control module that needed to be replaced due to what I think was minor water ingress through the cabin air intake. I swapped the module with one from my parts vehicle with no programming or coding necessary, and it fixed the issue with the air suspension. These modules are cheap, too. I found one on eBay for like 40 bucks. Once my ownership documents came in, it was time to call the DMV for an appointment. Thank you for calling the New Hampshire Division of Motor Vehicles, Bureau of Title and Anti-Theft. Title Bureau, this is... Good morning. I'm calling to schedule an appointment for a salvage inspection. All right, have you made a salvage with us before? I have not, no. Okay, so before we set up the appointment, we just want to make sure you have everything that you need for the appointment. Okay. Um, so proof of ownership, which is generally the salvage title. Yeah, I have a New York MV907A salvage certificate. Okay, perfect. And Hearing this gave me some relief as she said my MV907A would be sufficient to prove ownership. All right, and then the last thing is going to be the fee. So it is a $50 fee. 
Mm-hmm. All right, you are all set. You have a pen and paper? Uh, I do. Okay, so the number I'm going to give you is your NHI number. Okay. And that number, like I said, is how they're going to identify you and so they know where to pull the money out of. Okay. Um, and you are all set. Do you know, uh, the website mentions that I could use a 20-day temporary plate to drive the vehicle there. Do you know how I get one of those? Yes. So you would actually have to go to the DMV. Okay. Um, now that you've set up the appointment, you should be all set to go ahead and do that. Okay. Anything else I can help you with? No, I think that'll do it. Yeah. Thank you so much for your help. You are so welcome and good luck. All right. Thank you. Take care. You too. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. So here's my concern going into this inspection. If I were to film it openly as a YouTuber, I'm a little bit worried that I might get different treatment than I would otherwise. So I've set myself the challenge of filming it without them knowing that I'm filming it. I have this right here, which is designed to look like a name tag, but it has a little hidden camera in the corner here. So my plan is to hide this on my body somewhere. I'm also going to be wearing this, a wireless microphone. And lastly, I'm going to have an assistant who has a camera with a telephoto lens film the whole thing from a distance. Naturally, the night before the inspection, we got two feet of heavy, wet snow. It was an absolute mess. I pulled into the DMV with my hidden body camera rolling. There were no signs saying where to go, but there was a state police cruiser and three Department of Safety vehicles, along with some other people who looked like they were waiting around for inspections. Eventually, I was approached by an inspector. What time is your appointment? Uh, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Yes. You want to pay for it? Yes, sir. The process started by handing over all of the relevant paperwork. I hope it was salt water. Nope. Do you have the registration for the template? I do. Yeah. Uh, it's a push button start. Key's right there. At this point, he started it up, verified the mileage, and started checking to make sure all the electronics work. Things like turn signals and wipers. He also checked the steering from lock to lock. Why was this told? It was, it had a, well, it's a flood salvage, but it, it was really just a little bit of water, fresh water that came in through the, uh, the oh. air, the air intake. All right, I have to ask you how much you need to pay for it. 4,100. Oh, you did this? 4,100. I need to go and yeah, it was a hell of a deal. Eventually, it became apparent that my camera helper was attracting some suspicion. The woman DMV called me. We were asking about this car up here. We're taking the keys out. They're going in and out of there. We're going to go see what we can I played it cool and pretended not to hear so as not to blow my cover. While my cameraman was being questioned by the cop, the inspector had moved on to making sure all of the doors and windows work, including all of the switches and door handles inside and out. Is that gentleman up there? Is that your friend? Yes. Oh, okay. Is the ladies at DMV were a little concerned. Oh, yeah. He's not doing anything wrong. Right. There's nothing on toward occurring. However, they come out, they take breaks, they walk and stuff like that, and it's not customary for them to see a big, tall guy out. Yeah. Given today's climate, you might imagine people are just concerned. Yeah. So I just asked him to like, hang out by another door. Okay. It's, I said, yeah, you're not. There's nothing on toward occurring. Yeah. However, when people feel, you know, startled or frightened. Understood. Yeah. So that's why I appreciate the cooperation. Yep. Hey, I'll be right back with you. Sir. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. On this title. Yep. Write down what parts you took off this car. Okay. The inspector basically wanted me to make a note on the title of my parts car, any parts that were removed from it. All right. Hey, you've never done this before? No, I've never done it. Okay. The yellow piece of paper, this is your title here, and your, your transfer here. Mm-hmm. Um, your affidavit, here's your old title Yep. you wrote on, and all your other paperwork Okay. is here. That's all right. right. Cool. So, just, so this sticker here, as it says on it, if you remove it intentionally, yeah. it, it's an arrestable offense. Yep. All right? uh, if you ever sell this vehicle to anyone, mm-hmm. do yourself a favor. Put it in writing in the bill of sale that it's a salvage vehicle. Right. It required two by law. Okay. Right. Any other questions? No, I think that's it. All right. Have a good day, guys. Thank you very much. Yep. So by the end of the inspection, I got a form that I was able to bring to my town hall along with the salvage certificate, and I was able to successfully register the vehicle. That, by the way, is how things are typically done in New Hampshire. Usually you can get away with going to your local town hall and your town clerk will register your vehicle for you so you don't even have to go to the DMV. It's pretty nice. So I can definitely say for sure now that New Hampshire does indeed accept the New York 
MV907A salvage certificate. And the process overall was pretty easy. You just have to make sure your car is fully fixed and everything works as far as electronics, wipers, doors, windows, stuff like that. They didn't tell me that ahead of time, so I was not expecting that, but luckily everything works on this car, so I didn't have any issues. I have absolutely fallen in love with this car, and I've put a lot of miles on it now, probably driven it about 1,500 miles, and it is by far my favorite car. I don't even know where to start. There are so many things I like about it, but the comfort really is number one. The ride quality with the air suspension, it's even better than it is on my Land Rovers, and that's saying a lot because those things are pretty darn comfortable. The seats are comfortable with really high quality leather. Even the headrest, most cars have headrests that are pretty firm, but this one is nice and soft and comfortable. The seats are able to hug you and they're adjustable too, so if you don't like that, you can disable it. The windows have double glazing and there's a ton of noise insulation in the vehicle, so it's super quiet in here as vehicles drive by. You barely hear any road noise at all. In fact, I can speak very quietly at highway speeds and you can still hear me. The handling on this thing is really not too bad for what it is. I mean, it's a big, heavy car with a comfortable ride, air suspension, so it's boaty and it is not a sports car, but it's a normal sedan with a fairly low center of gravity and the handling is, you know, it's totally adequate. It's a lot better than a Land Rover, that's for sure. The speed and acceleration of this thing is nice too. 429 horsepower with a twin turbo V8 and 500 something foot pounds of torque. When you step on it, this thing really moves and it sounds good too because it has some flaps in the exhaust that open up when you step on it. So you get that nice V8 noise when you want it, but when you're cruising on the highway, it doesn't make any noise. It's very, very nice. The brakes are good. Everything is laid out and thought out well in the vehicle. I really can't imagine having a better vehicle than this unless I spend way more money. Where this vehicle really shines is long road trips on the highway where the miles just fly by. So what's coming up next? I've been working on a diesel sailboat engine for a friend, a little bit of a change of pace for the channel, but there'll be a video coming out on that at some point. My dad is looking for a new truck, so I've been keeping an eye out on the auction sites for that. I convinced him to go with a GMT 800 Duramax, so for those of you looking for more diesel truck content, there should be some more of that coming up at some point. And then lastly, my gooseneck trailer build. I am planning on getting back on that pretty soon now that the snow is melting, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.